despite nothing happening in this episode, I still got over a page of notes written down for this episode, which nothing happened in. No progression. This was a filler episode. Right, just remind me how bad the CGI looks in the show right from the get-go. This is the same stock footage mountain range from the episode before for a completely different planet. Where did all the money go into? Because I can get that same mountain range for free. Where did the money go to? I wonder. Uh, you have to remember, I, I do have to point this out. This show, each single episode, has cost more than the entire film Godzilla Minus One. So where did all this money go to if they're using stock footage? So in the beginning scene, you see where the Wookiee lives. He's preparing dinner or whatever. And you see what it is he is looking into. Yes, that is the same symbol that we got from last week that connects the Force to the thread and not the way that the Force actually works. So that's... I want to say it's interesting, but the dialogue in this show is just incredible. Wow. What good writing, I have to say. Now, I'll show you the scene where the Padawans are training their flourishes. Keep each movement tight, yet subtle. What? Keep what? Diminish areas of vulnerability. Maximize your defenses without need to strike. What? Like, what? Uh, what? They're practicing their flourishes and then being told, you know, don't move too much. Oh, so good. So good. But it gets better. So after the training, this... Padawan, I can't remember her name, who cares really, goes because Osha was watching, goes to her, and they basically have a conversation rehashing everything that happened in the previous episode and everything that both characters actually already know. It's like, it, you know, when you go to theater or something and you have the maid and the butler come out and explain, oh, you know, the master is out of the house, and then the maid uh, goes, well, yes, but you know that he took his mistress with him. Like, things like, yeah, they're not there. It is things that if you were paying attention, you know. In a show like this, it is not needed. And it is just, okay, whatever. But there are these slight moments where you have the feeling like they are tighter than tight. Like, they've known each other for years and years, and they they cherish each other, and they, they will miss each other because Osha's going to leave now that everything's cleared up. It's not her. And this one, like, it just, it, it feels like they are setting up some sort of relationship between the two that just hasn't happened. There is nothing there, but I guess, you know, power of lesbianism I, I that's all i can think of but it's also great you know the the padawan is like we need to stop may you know your sister your evil twin and she's like yeah i know but i don't care not my problem the jedi will deal with it like okay whatever and this you know she's like i'm not gonna join and i'm gonna walk off you know but if i ever come back to course i you know have to hit you up you know we're gonna go on a date and and i, I don't even know what this was it was useless just you know telling the audience hey guess what this happened and we're going to rehash it into words because 
I don't know. Do do the writers believe we are stupid? The audience is so stupid that we don't know that we don't realize this stuff, or is it that people like Leslie Headland are just so stupid that they themselves need this level of storytelling to know what's going on? I'm, Either one is very, very stupid. Another bad CGI ship. So apparently this planet where the Wookiee is on is so unexplored that even bounty hunter, this was part of the writing, that even bounty hunters would not step foot into the forest there. And yet there is a sophisticated built bridge in this unexplored planet. Why? Do you see Dan Aykroyd's character back there, the Conehead? Um, I guess supposedly that is supposed to be Ki Adi Mundi from the prequel trilogy. You might be wondering, as was I, how could this be him? He'd have to be freaking old. Like, to the point of death old. Like, he wouldn't be around in the prequels old. And at the end, at the credits, wrote down Ki Adi Mundi. Uh, that's no joke. But into this scene, they are watching a hologram of May fighting. It's like, someone trained her. And, and the answer to that was basically, yeah, but she's really bad. Like, wow. Awesome writing there. Great job, team. This is possibly the most bitch-made character of all in this whole entire series. That being said, she does make a point. May has killed two Jedi. Let's not take her easily. Let's, you know, if, if we need to, she needs to die. Am I actually agreeing with this character? Instead of sending Soul, she wants to send this Jedi, no idea who it is, to apprehend May on the planet, on the Wookiee planet. And also, they can't contact the Wookiee, even though that he's apparently on assignment, not on exile or anything like that. He's on assignment, but nobody can get a hold of him, and he doesn't respond, and there's no way to just... Wow. The writing for this story, for this episode, whoop. Oh, so great. So great. Yeah, I had to watch it, so I'm torturing you with more pictures of this one right here. But Sol, the Asian Jedi, um, he subjects and he wants to be the one to go and meet May. And he's he's still uh, to the point like we need to try to save May. Like, she can still be helped. And I know how to do it. And with Osha here, we have a bargaining chip. Because I love you guys. So they talk about a lot of nonsense together on the road to find the Wookiee. Very useless nonsense that, you know, she doesn't know who the Master is. He doesn't apparently know who the Master is. The Master just collects people and they're scared and... Oh, this time you have to actually kill the Jedi without, you know, using arms, you know, weapon or whatever. The extent of emotional acting. Oh, Sul, he is now stopping Osha from leaving, saying, hey, I need you, you know, you're going to be a great help. And even she realizes that she's just being used on this mission. But I guess now it's she decided it's OK. She is going to go along on the mission after all. She does want to stop May. And then they bring in a, a joke that's supposed to be funny. Like, they do these kinds of jokes, like on, on Avatar, you know, where Soka goes, I'm not ever going to ride that beast, you know, talking about Appa, the, the huge um, bison, flying bison. And then the next scene is, yes, you see him flying on the bison. But, you know, they kind of, at least in the Avatar, set that up that he and, and the Bison don't really get along. Here, there was absolutely no setup. And she's like, but I'm not going to wear any of the civilian garbs. And the next scene is apparently civilian garbs. 
But the thing is, the joke doesn't work here because it isn't set up. There is no setup. Why are there civilian garbs? Why doesn't she want to wear them? There's no reason. It's just supposed to be funny. I guess we're supposed to laugh here. <laughs> so I guess this is the character where the showrunners had the need to insert pronouns, which I'm not even that mad about the way it was portrayed. Like, it's a badger mole type. I don't know what it's supposed to be. Where the main osha character asks the padawan is he on our side or well they on our side like i wouldn't know what to call this thing i wouldn't know if it's a male if it's a female no idea so it's not the win the showrunners would have wanted for the pronouns and yet they still brought in the pronouns oh gosh what a great time that was by the way Where's the cat girl Padawan? I miss her. Wow, just look at the bad CGI there. Doesn't this scene just give you Lord of the Rings traveling epic adventure feelings? No? Oh. I see. Weird alien bug attack. I don't know why this scene is even in this episode. These two just have the best dialogue together. Again, I have to ask, what sort of relationship have they built up in the maybe few days that they've been together? Like, crazy. Whatever. But the dialogue for this, oh my god. She is like, it was horrifying to see something die. And the Padawan's like, oh, but it's beautiful to see something Return to the Force? That's psycho! That is so freaking psycho! Uh, it was so good to watch something die! That is the way the Jedis think? Now she wants to turn herself in. Look, since Osha, her sister, still lives, I guess everything changes. Or, well, that's what she told us here in this scene. That everything changed now that her sister is still alive. It actually hasn't because her mission was to take revenge on everyone who killed her family. And she believes that it was the Jedi who did this. So her mission is not over with. We all know at this point, if you watch the show and at this point, she's saying she's going to turn herself in. The Jedi are going to do what's right. You know, I, I, I don't want to be this evil person anymore. First off, you killed two Jedi. You're a horrible person. I wouldn't change my mind as the Jedi. But, like, even, even if everything played out the way it was supposed to, it's going to happen, but you are supposed to feel sympathetic for this character. She's not evil. She was pushed into this by the Jedi. Surprise! The Wookiee's dead! Has a slash right over his chest right there. Funnily... If a force user, a random person, gets a lightsaber stabbed through their chest, they can still live unless they are Qui-Gon Jinn. But this little cut here, that's enough to kill the Wookiee. And guess what? It's Mei who, went, who ran in there and saw that. She didn't do it, but, you know, the Jedi are probably not going to accept, you know, like... Yeah, of course that was you. You killed the Jedi. That's all your whole... Ex even though that... Uh, we'll get into it because there's another character going to show up here in a moment. Hey, the Sith! Or as the internet is graciously calling this person, Smilo Ren, uh, shows up now suddenly. <laughs> Her neck just snapped, right? I mean, that looked like it would snap a, a neck. She got to be dead by now, right? As I said, nothing really happened in this episode, even though that I have almost one and a half pages full of notes 
about how bad this was. Again, I'm trying to find a caveat in every episode where I'm like, yes, this is the one piece of chocolate that I found through digging this entire pile of stinking, hot, smoldering shit. And I'm, I'm coming up blank here, people. I guess maybe the bitch maid actually said something correct. The green bald head thing. Like, yeah, she's dangerous. She murdered two Jedi. Let's not go easy on her. Let's make sure this job is done and that no more Jedi get, you know, are harmed. I actually agree with this character. But other than that, that was this episode. It was a short one. It wasn't even 30 minutes long. It was like, I don't know, maybe 25 tops. It was a short episode. It was a filler episode. That's all that it was. And just boring. Nothing happened, but it was shit all the same. The really horrible writing, the really horrible CGI, like, like where did all the money go to? that they pour, poured into this show. They poured in enough in each, every single episode to make one Godzilla minus one movie. But at the same time, I'm enjoying making videos again and reviewing something. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed a lot more than what you get out of the Disney show itself. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. Smash that like button, you know, or even, hey, if you don't like what I'm saying, you know, give me a thumbs down. It will no I will know that I need to do something better or do something different. Let me know any criticisms in the comments. I will definitely work on them if they're actually good criticisms, constructive criticisms. But also, everyone who wants to call me a racist, a bigot, a cynic phobe, comment. I like knowing that you people are out there trying to make me stop. I enjoy it. Anyway, thank you for stopping by, and until next time, take care.